My name is Lorenzo. I am a medical doctor from Italy and I'm here finishing a four-year PhD in clinical neuroscience at Queen Square. I have been interested in epilepsy its cognitive implications since med school. So after qualifying for medical school and finishing my internship, I decided to pursue a PhD. And I wanted to focus on epilepsy and cognition and I was interested in neuroimaging. So I started applying for PhD positions. I applied for the four-year PhD in clinical neuroscience and the first steps of the applications were pretty simple. So we needed a covering letter and CV and sort of an application form, which was pretty short. And following that, if we were shortlisted, we would go for interview. And I also put in a couple of other applications, one for a PhD program in Oxford and one for a PhD program in Cambridge. Um, in hindsight, I would recommend that, I mean, to maximize the chance of getting accepted into a PhD program, it would be wise to send more than three three applications, I would recommend five and ten. I think it would be a good thing if you could have a look in advance at what universities may offer programs you're interested in and maybe start looking between a year or nine months ahead because that's when most application deadlines start coming up. So for example, for the Queen Square PhD program, our application deadline was end of November. I wanted to pursue formal research training because I think in the long term I aspire to specialize as a neurologist but also to combine my clinical commitments with research activities so to pursue an academic career focusing on the underlying mechanism of brain function. And I think doing a PhD is a fundamental step in this process because it's one of the only real periods in your life as a clinician when you can sort of get protected time for research, learn analysis skills, um, understand your methods and also have the opportunity to think about what you would like to do in your research and sort of getting those ideas that are those that get you going uh, later on in your life as an academic clinician. I chose Queen Square because of its world-renowned reputation and the possibility to combine cognitive imaging and EEG data to study epilepsy. All the MRI data acquisition was done in, at the Epilepsy Centre in Chalfont, which is affiliated with UCL and UCLH. The advantage is that it's an epilepsy-dedicated MRI scanner, which meant that I had access basically to the scanner every day and we had a lot of flexibility in terms of booking slots. And and this made a huge difference in terms of patient recruitment and data acquisition. So it's something I would really recommend looking at, sort of having a, an idea what facilities you may have and what kind of data acquisition you may do before you start your PhD. So I started my PhD in clinical neuroscience at Queen Square in 2014 and it's one of those four-year PhD programs. So the first year you do three rotations, three months each in three laboratories which you like. Following those you choose the main project which is going to be what you're going to do for the subsequent three years. I found this quite interesting because it gave me the opportunity to get a gist of what my research in each of those laboratories was like. My PhD is a bit of a composite thing, so I have four main projects. And I think the common theme is to look at cognitive dysfunction, determinants of disease severity in epilepsy, and to look at genetically determined abnormalities. So I focus on three different epilepsy syndromes, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, frontal lobe epilepsy, and temporal lobe epilepsy. In each of these projects, we had one specific question we wanted to answer. So for example, in juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, we knew that frontothalmocortical abnormalities were supposed to be the substrates of ictogenesis and cognitive dysfunction. We wanted to see whether the temporal lobe was also involved. And also in the same syndromes, we wanted to detect genetically driven traits by investigating patients and their unaffected siblings. Temporal lobe epilepsy, we wanted to look at the sort of some determinants of disease severity. So number one is we wanted to establish whether especially pharmacoresistant temporal lobe epilepsy was a progressive disorder. And also we wanted to see whether we could detect some imaging signatures of generalized tonic-clonic seizures, which occur in a proportion of patients with temporal lobe epilepsy. For all these projects, I used a combination of structural and functional imaging. I was lucky enough to be able to do a lot of data acquisition myself, so I garnered substantial expertise in cognitive and imaging data acquisition and data analysis. 
I really enjoyed my PhD experience at Queen Square for the combination of clinical and research opportunities and for the multidisciplinary environment whereby you have physicists, clinicians interacting on a daily basis and I think that's particularly important for the kind of research I'm doing, which is neuroimaging. And I really strongly recommend that you should apply to UCL for your PhD. 